Welcome to the Reschooled Podcast, the show that discusses all the things that schools may have missed with your hosts, AJ Kuti and Jason Gordon. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. We are Reschooled Podcast, the show that discusses the things that schools may not have prepared you for. As always, I'm AJ and across from me, Jason. Jason, how you doing? Doing great, AJ. Super excited to be here today. Dude, can you imagine we're on episode 19? We're one away from 20. Whew, time flies. No kidding. Uh, Lots of fun, too. I've enjoyed this. This is this has been a lot of fun. And and to be able to look through and see all the topics that are coming up, it's one of those things we've actually had the discussion. You know, how much is too much? Is one per week enough or could we do two? Or And, you know, we toyed with the idea of doing two per week and it's just one of those things that we don't know the, the what the future holds with our, our normal jobs. And we don't want to miss that time. We don't want to say we're going to do it two weeks and have to miss something. So we just decided to do one, but who knows in the future we may move to two because we've just got so many topics that we can talk. For. I think I counted them up. I think of all of our list and what's already on the doc. I think we're somewhere around a hundred episodes. Well, that's a good segue there. Uh, you know, I remind everybody every episode to go to our website, reschooled dot com. That's reschool with a D rather than an E D. Check out our social media handles, Reschooled Pod. And then of course on all your favorite podcast apps, Spotify, Google, Apple, all those follow us, get notifications when we post new episodes. But that being said, if you want to hear about special topics, uh, if you want to hear more of this stuff, if you have an opinion on whether we should go with one episode a week or two a week, let us know. That's why we give y'all a way to reach out to us, right? We want to know the topics that matter to you, and we'll talk about them. And if you want to hear us talk with more frequency, we're more than happy to do it. Yeah, and don't forget our addition to YouTube. Absolutely. Uh, we've got some videos up there now dealing with different questions, specific questions on the general topics we've talked about in the podcast. With These are more specialized. It's just a video specific to one question, but we can go a little deeper. So it's generally about three to five minutes. So you can either find us on YouTube if you can't find the answer on the, the podcast or vice versa. Uh, hopefully you will continue to, to, to be with us on the podcast. Also, too, if you like what you hear and you want to help us out, please leave us that five-star review if you feel like it, if you feel it's worth it. Uh, we would love to hear from you that way, too. So, uh, This episode, well, let me go back. Last episode, we introduced a new series, uh, the Advanced College Series, and we talked about the senior year or senior years, depending on what bucket you fall into. This one, we're going to be talking about internships. We hinted on it last episode. Uh, we're going to be talking about internships and the importance of internships, or if they are important to begin with. And so... Quick question of the day, Jason. Did you have an internship during your college career? One of the biggest mistakes of my college career, and the answer is no, I did not. Really? That See, that's super shocking because I, now granted, we don't talk about this stuff before the episode, and I would have just assumed because of your connection with the internship, at, at least at our college, and your focus on the importance of internships, that you would have had one. You know, that was one of the wake-up calls to me. The fact when I went through college that I understood the whole career path and how internships played into it and all of those things, so little. And then I stumbled my way into it later and things like that. And luckily, things worked out for me. You know, I still, you know, uh, you fall downhill, I guess, some, you know, as long as that's the direction you want to go, that's good, right? Sure. But um, I made mistakes by not doing that and having seen it later and seeing what it could have offered and what I should have been doing and things like that. I didn't want others to make that mistake. That was one of my reasons to get involved with student interns at our academic institution to help them along the way, to not let them make some of the mistakes that plagued me. And now on this podcast, that's one reason I'm so excited to talk about it, right? To try to get some of that information, some of that knowledge out there. That's that's really interesting. So I didn't have a, an internship either. I figured we were going to be a little bit different on this. I didn't have an internship, but I didn't have one for a different reason. It, well, I wouldn't say it was a mistake. Granted, if I was going a different route, it would have been a mistake, but I had all of my eggs in a single basket when it came to my career. I knew without a shadow of a doubt, I was going to teach college because if I couldn't teach college, then I was going to be miserable doing anything else. And there's really not an internship for college, you know, teaching college. So there was not one that was going to give me value back because I did not want anything to do with the going into accounting in practice and like go to a CPA firm or anything like that. I didn't want anything to do that because that's just not me. I would have gotten too bored with it and ADD would have kicked in and it just would have been, I'd probably been fired. But 
that's why I didn't go into internship is because it, there's not one for me. So I, like I said, I put all my eggs in that basket and it, it worked out, but that's why I didn't have an internship. And not the recommended course. Of no, action, it is definitely right? not that. Yeah, no, you definitely want to have a plan B if you, if you could, I actually found my plan B in the, my graduating semester of grad school. And so that's, that's a different story, but yeah, coming out of undergrad, I didn't, I didn't, I felt like I was too good for an internship. I don't know, but let's get into the main topics because I think this is where it's going to help students more. And I know, like I said, you're, you're very passionate about it. I'm passionate about it, but I'm passionate about it from the sense of just, I want, I want the best for the listeners and for my students. So I'm interested to hear what you have to say. Let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. What are internships? So internships are different than part-time jobs to start with. So an internship's primary focus is learning. That is experience that generally a student coming in would get to exposure to or get to work on things that otherwise would be beyond them. That is, if they were to join the organization then and there straight out, that these types of projects would be reserved for someone with a higher level of experience. So the student comes into the organization, they have a plan for the things that they're going to be exposed to and or work on. And honestly, they get to cut their teeth on those things in a way that, you know, they're not full-time employees, but they are spending an adequate amount of time to learn the business, to take part in the project, that type of thing. Employers tend to use it as a try it before you buy it type scenario. Right. Uh, they'll oftentimes look to hire new employees in the business, uh, entry level employees from their internship programs. Oftentimes you cannot get an internship with a company unless you are a student. That is a common misperception. And I have to answer that question all the time. It has to do with the labor laws and the perception that somebody, if they're not an intern, that they're not a temporary employee. They're an employee who would somehow be entitled to unemployment insurance. And right. And that's something the business does not want to get into. So the laws being what they were are internships are for students with the primary purpose to learn. Yeah, I, the, the, I, that's the key is the learn. It's not the training. I think, you know, I, I, I want to say I read something somewhere or I heard something somewhere where students only take about 30 percent of the information out of your college class and actually use it. They learn the rest of it in the, the workforce. But if you couple what you learn, or I should say you're, what you're trained with in the workforce, I should say, if you couple what you learn in the internship with the stuff that you learn in college, it's going to expand that and it's going to make your transition from college to career a lot easier. Oh, yeah. There, there are so many benefits associated with it that we'll talk about throughout the, the exposure experience, the engagement, the learning, the networking, all of those things come together. I guess if I were to put a little bit more precise definition on it, it is separate from a part-time job in how the employer sees it as much as anything. You'll learn a lot in a part-time job, but oftentimes you're relegated in that job to things that you either know how to do or or are within your wheelhouse to, to learn. They're not above your pay grade, as they would say. Internships tend to expose you to things that would generally be above your pay grade. Right. Projects that would be worked on by more senior professionals, scenarios such as attending meetings and things like that where you'd be excluded otherwise. Oftentimes or usually internships are paid because the IRS regulations say that um, if the company is using the employee in a way that creates value for the company that would replace the efforts of an employee, you're supposed to pay them. Right. So that alone and the Fair Labor Standards Act reiterates that same point, right? If you're replacing an employee, you're supposed to pay them. So in that way, a, a part-time job and an internship can be quite similar, but that's where they start to diverge, right? They're both paid. One focuses on higher level learning. The other one focuses more on mundane task and just creating value for the company in that position at the time. Both are valuable. But the internship, once again, has those secondary benefits and the perception of an internship to outsiders, to other companies, to graduate schools is far better for the internship than it is the part time job. The assumption in the part time job is that you're working in something that is at your pay grade. That is something that you can do without a college degree. 
the perception of an internship is. It is a learning process as part of the college degree, but you also are getting experience beyond that of your traditional college student or college educated student. One term that I've heard in the past is externship. Do you know, you know, you know much about that? Yeah. So that's a, it get it has many different definitions. I've heard, and I've been to conferences on this. I've talked with people who are involved in the process. They generally call an externship an outside experience where you're not working and providing value. So you're not getting paid necessarily. Usually you're not getting paid. So you're not, it's more of a shadowing type scenario. Gotcha. And they oftentimes use it in terms of you're not getting academic credit either, but that's not always true. So however you define it, you're going to see all kinds of different definitions. I tend to group them together. An internship, whether it's paid or not, whether it's you're just primarily shadowing or whether you're creating value for the company, th- those are all just details about the structure of your particular internship. An internship is about learning. A part-time job is about doing tasks for a company in exchange for value. That makes sense. Do you feel that internships are important and why, if so? Incredibly important. And they're more important for certain career paths than others. So certain career paths, there is a funnel that you go down. If you're going to be a doctor, you have to go through medical school. You have to go through your residencies and all those types of things. It's, it's a, and the residency tends to be a bottleneck, right? where you get your placements and, and things like that, where for, you know, similar for education and things like that, where you're going to do the work study while you're in school and the cooperatives that happen in many engineering programs. But say business, for example, where you're going to work for a business. Most businesses hire their new employees, their recent graduates from their internship programs. They hire their interns. So when you see the statistic out there that over 70% of jobs in the United States are not publicly posted, you start to say, well, these companies, they're hiring from somewhere, right? And it's not all lateral transfers. These recent graduates are getting jobs. How are they finding the jobs if they're not publicly posted? And it comes through referral. Having an internship, one, that becomes your connection base. Those are the people who are going to refer you to jobs. Even if the intern company that you're with immediately cannot hire you, they serve as your point of reference for your referral to other companies. And what I've seen in the past, if those companies really want to put their name out for you to go to bat for you, I'll say, to reach out to others on your behalf and try to find opportunities for you, they can. And the opportunities that they can generate are incredible. They can get you opportunities that otherwise you would have no chance of getting on your own. So your network, is, you know, the internship is extremely integrated with your professional network and establishing that yourself. So that's why it's important. I would say, one, career-wise, you need to use it in order to make the connections that you're going to need in order order to create opportunities for you in the future career-wise. Yeah, I, I can say just from from personal experience, uh, from the people that I graduated grad school with, that accounting, internships and accounting are huge. Most of the students that had internships during the year that I went through my master's of accountancy program had offers from the place that they did their internship from. They had offers from them before they graduated. And well, it would be worth it to for us to tell them, you know, kind of how large companies hire So like your Fortune 500 or even Fortune 1000 companies, we know that they hire from their internship programs, but also they have highly structured internship programs. So their HR department creates the internship programs for the summer. So it's a two and a half to three month experience, normally a 12 week experience. During the summer, they bring in this entire cohort there, it's very rotational in nature. There's a lot of camaraderie stuff like company picnics and softball games and all that kind of neat stuff. But it's very rotational where the students get to see various aspects of the business and things like that. And the HR team manages them throughout the summer. And as long as you don't mess up, as long as something doesn't go wrong, if you get that internship, if you're part of that 40, 80, 100, 200, 300 interns that that major company brings in for the summer, you are almost 100% guaranteed to get a job offer. So coming out of your sophomore year, some going into your junior year, right, that summer between your sophomore and junior year, 
or that summer between your junior and senior year, you do that internship, you'll have a job offer that waits for you for one to two years. And the two years is uh, astonishing, but it happens. And oftentimes the companies offer a bonus that the earlier you accept their offer and just hold it, the larger your bonus is. Like in particularly MBA programs, the standard the standard process, say for consulting companies, is to offer the interns a job within two months of their internship ending. They hold their job the entire year, and the earlier you accept it, you get anywhere from you know twenty to thirty thousand dollar bonus. If outside of those two months, right, your <laughs> your bonus cuts down in half, and then if you wait all the way past Christmas, uh, the December time frame, you lose all of your bonus, but the job offer stays open until another cutoff date. That's incredible, isn't it? So they they structure it down like that to incentivize you to accept earlier. So when you hear about these students that are getting a job offer that's just waiting on them, it's because they did the work early. They did the internship program with these companies. Here's another thing about that. You need to prepare, if that's your objective, you want to be with a big company, they list, you have to start applying for those internships sometimes seven, eight, nine months in advance. So if you start in August, you start school in August, and you want to do an internship with Coca-Cola Company. They're you know, a big employer here in Atlanta. Atlanta's really lucky. It has 32 Fortune 500 companies and it's with main operations here. If you want to intern at any of those companies, if you don't apply within August, September, or October for the May internship, so again, that's eight months in advance, you, you won't be considered. Right. Which also puts a a focus on the importance of keeping up your grades and doing well in the first three years because you don't have that senior that senior year to push those grades for that because you're applying to, you know, these internships before. Absolutely. And to tell you the truth, if you get the internship and you do well after that point, your grades, except for passing, your grades do not matter to that employer anymore. Now, that's not true for some industries. Financial industry is a little different, particularly if you're going to go the Wall Street route, that type of thing, or you're going to go management consulting or something in that field. But for most just corporate level Fortune 500 companies, if you got the internship and did well, you're going to get the job offer. And as long as you pass, you are fine. Now, I would say the strategy firms and the um, finance firms, they are selling your credentials right? As a, as a wealth advisor or as a trader or as a um, management consultant or strategy consultant or whatever, they are selling y- your business acumen and your skills. So they still want to see progress in uh, academics and things like that. And of course, the academic aspect always comes in as to going for, to graduate school, right? So anyway, with that being said, the primary importance of the internship is making those connections and potentially using it as a direct entry into a particular job or corporation. Because otherwise, getting into one of these corporations as a recent graduate is next to impossible if you don't know somebody who can drop your resume on the right desk. That makes sense. How would you say that typical internships are structured? Like what goes into them? So generally it starts with, if it's one of these large company programs, they are very structured, right? Your every day for a 12-week period is planned as to the projects you'll be working on, the rotations you'll do, all that kind of stuff. But that's a small segment of the internships that happen, right? The majority of internships are with smaller, mid-sized businesses that don't have that structured internship program. So oftentimes a student will have to spend a lot of time creating for themselves what they want to do. The company will have an idea, well, we want an accounting intern, we want a marketing intern, and they're going to work on these types of things. But because it's less structured and because oftentimes, you know, you're not paying the rate that you would for an employee, or oftentimes there's some level of obligation that they feel because the student's also getting academic credit that the employer has to introduce elements of learning and things like that. So they they leave a lot of autonomy to the student to develop what they want to be exposed to, that they get to become familiar with what the business does and gets to offer up ways that they can help. That is, 
asking, can I work on this project or be a part of this? Can I go to this meeting with the senior manager? Can I be a part of this activity or just shadow in this regard? Oftentimes, students ask me, a company's offering an unpaid internship. Should I take it? I said, well, find out more about it. If they want you to create value, uh, well, maybe not, right? Not unless you think it'll lead to an opportunity. But if they're primarily focused on your learning rather than them creating value and you have the opportunity to get experience way beyond what you would otherwise, it may be worth it to you to take an internship that is otherwise unpaid but offers you the ability to sit in on a, a, a meeting of the board of directors or sitting sit in on executive level meetings or to be part of a really neat project where you're you know, integrally involved in a way that you otherwise wouldn't be able to. And they will allow you to do that because, once again, you know, there, there's kind of this perception there. If they're paying you, they tell you what to do. If they're not paying you, there's a mutual back and forth. They owe you some things, you owe them some things, and in that way you can do more to, to scope your own internship experience. Yeah, and really quickly, there is a difference between internships because some are paid and some are non-paid. And so that is something that you have to go through and understand when you're looking into internships or going to accept internships is, is it paid? Is it unpaid? If it is unpaid, then what are you getting out of it outside of the financial benefit? And like you said, are you, are you creating some kind of benefit for the business that you're not getting paid for? So that is, a, that is a big part of this too. I know, you know, it's always nice to get paid, but just because they're unpaid doesn't necessarily mean they're bad. And one other point there, don't leave it upon the business to know this because I deal with businesses all the time that don't understand this. They don't understand that if you are replacing an employee or adding value that they need to pay you, right? They need to withhold payroll taxes. Mm -hmm. The Fair Labor Standards Act says that they have to do these things. So they don't know, right? So oftentimes I inform them and that's not a pleasant conversation. So students, Parents, if you're out there listening to this, right, understand that oftentimes the employer won't know this. So when you're going into the internship opportunity and you're applying and you understand that it's an unpaid internship, well, you need to make it known as to what your expectations are, what you're going to get out of this type scenario. And understand also if they're paying you, then in a way they can treat you just like a part time employee. So they have less obligation. I guess, as you would say, legally, pursuant to the you know IRS regulations and Fair Labor Standards, that they don't have to offer you that learning experience that you're looking for. You are, in essence, a part-time employee that is just temporary in nature, meaning you're not going to qualify for unemployment benefits when the internship, quote unquote, ends. Well, one of the biggest questions that I get from students is, how, how do I go about getting internships? Is this something that I need to go pursue on my own or is it something that the college does for me or, you know, how does that work? What if I already have a job and I want to possibly use that as an internship? Is that possible? So how, I guess, how does it go? How do you go about getting an internship? So I want to address both of those, but separately, the, sure. can I use my job as an internship type thing? But uh, first of all, how, should, should you go out there and get an internship on your own? The answer is always Yes. <laughs> Can the school help you? Yes. Um, so the way I'd look at it is like this. It's a huge benefit to you. You should at every turn attempt to network, make connections with professionals, look for potential internship opportunities, because in a way career-wise and professionally in terms of you know you understanding your career path and things like that and the engagement that you get from it in your learning, right? The things that you're exposed to, all of those benefits are there. You should constantly look for an internship. How do you do that? Well, you network with people. Different industries are going to do it differently. If you're in education, right? The more involved you are in education related events, right? The more connections you're going to make, the more opportunities you're going to have for summer internships, for cooperative type placements, right? That you have to complete your practicum or whatever uh, they call it during the year. Same thing with healthcare. It still comes down to connections. Now, if you are part of say healthcare uh, or education, the school is going to have a lot of connections where they will 
place you in internships or whatever you want to call it, cooperatives during the school year uh, to complete your practical requirements and things like that. So the schools will assist a lot. For other concentrations outside of those two, engineering is a little bit different because the cooperative programs built in there into part of their academic program. But when it comes to all the social sciences, the liberal arts, business, it's on you. Now, you can go to the school and will they help you find an internship? Sure. But employers don't take placements in these areas very often, particularly in business. They want to interview you just like they would an employee, just like they would uh, anyone coming into the company full time, right? They want to see that you're a good fit because they are bu- trying it before they buy it type scenario. So the co- the school can help you and it would vary. I mean, different programs will help you in different ways. When I say programs, programs of study will help you in different ways. But particularly business students and things like that, you need to do most of the work on your own. Yeah, my answer to that question would have been the same in that if a college helps you, they're not going to do anything for you when it comes to relationship. They're not going to say like, here's the interview. I mean, here's the internship. You're actually still going to have to go through it. But I'm a firm believer of if you want something done, do it yourself. Don't rely on anybody else. Don't rely on the college to do this. If they help you, great. But I'm somebody that I would just rely on myself before I rely on anybody else. Great. And the last point I want to talk about before we wind this up, AJ, is that question about should you use your current employment as an internship? And I say yes, but only in one scenario. So if you have a current part-time job or full-time job at a place and you say, I want to use that as my internship, look at what the benefits of the internship are. One, networking and connections. Two, appearance on your resume, you know, so it uh, you know, for future credentials, and three, that it could lead to immediately the type of job you want. Well, using your current job as an internship does not fit into those very well. One, you already know the people there. It doesn't allow you to expand your network. Two, they already see you as the part-time employee rather than the intern. So unless you can get stationed in a different department under different circumstances as far as a formal program, you're going to run into that same scenario as to why people leave companies to move up in the ranks because they can't promote quickly enough to match their skill set and knowledge within a given company. Well, there they're going to see you as that part-time employee. They'll see you trying to do an internship to go into a professional position rather than, say, a labor or technical position in the company as somehow jumping rank and things like that. So there's a lot of impediments there to that, right? Perception wise and things like that. So unless you can structure it like that to be a completely separate experience under different management or leadership, and it will ultimately open up doors to you, kind of like a management training program or something could open up a door for you to uh, a different opportunity in the same company. If you can use the internship like that, yes. But if not, then you need to make the hard decision of how do I make the preparations to financially say, okay, I'm going to work less, I'm going to do an internship at a different company, or I'm going to quit altogether at my current employment to focus on the internship because I know that will be the necessary stepping stone to start the career path and track that I desire. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that I hear or I see with students who ask that question of, I've already got a current job and I'm already getting paid. Can I use that as an internship? They're doing it for the wrong reason. They're doing it simply because it's a way to get a paid three-hour course credit for their school and not for the benefit of what really an internship really is. An an extended learning, hands-on learning, visual learning, not sitting in the classroom. So if you're going to go into an internship, you know, we talked about why it's important. It's really understanding what an internship is there for, not simply just to get three hours of course credit, but to really get something out of it. And if you're not going to do it for the right reason, then I wouldn't, I would say don't do it. Uh, it's not simply just to get paid because it's going to really actually have an alternative effect, uh, potentially. One last question, and we can keep this kind of brief because I know we're coming up on time, but when do you think is the best time to go after an internship for students? as early in your academic career as possible. Now, a lot of people might say that, you know, you wait till the end once you have a built up area of knowledge and things like that. But the reason I go the other direction of that is, well, one, you need to decide what you want to do in your life. And until you've seen some of those things, 
until you've been exposed to what someone does on a daily basis, oftentimes school doesn't give you a good understanding of that. So early internships can help scope what you want to do. Two, early internships are great credentials for getting better internships later on. If you want that internship at, at Bank of America or at McKinsey Consulting Firm or at you know some other prestigious firm or company, then having prior internship experience is going to help you a ton. So if you've done that early internship, one, you know, just like going to graduate school, you've got the qualifications for that next internship. So it's going to help you there as well. And a lot of people say, you know, well, you don't have the knowledge to do it. Just remember this. School is to teach you about things, right? Theoretical underpinnings and stuff like that. You may have to work harder in the beginning of an internship to learn things because you have not been exposed to it in school. But I will promise you this, if you've been exposed to something and you've worked your way through it as to how it works and how you do things, when you go back to the classroom and you start to study those things that you have seen, you will be exponentially more engaged, particularly in very practical, very hands-on technical things like finance or accounting or law or things like that. You will have seen it in a way, and all of a sudden, your coursework is so much more engaging than it was before. So that's my opinion on that as far as like you, as early and as often as possible, just like voting. You vote early and often. All right. Well, I'm going to be a bit of a contrarian then because I'm going to come from the different side. So we're going to actually disagree a little bit on this. One. This is going to be interesting. Um, I wish we had more time so we can actually debate this, but I'm going to say you don't want to do it too early because, and it really just was what you were talking about. I'm somebody that when you go into an internship, I feel like you need to have some level of foundation, foundational knowledge. So, and again, I'm speaking this from my experience in accounting. If you're going to go into an internship for accounting, there are certain things that I would venture to say that you're going to need to know, at least to make your learning experience better in within that that internship. So basic terminologies. And I'm not saying that you have to go to 4,000 level college classes to get that foundation. I'm just saying like intro to financial accounting where you learn the basics of what a revenue truly is, what an expense truly is, what are, you know, what are assets, what are liabilities, those kind of things. Having that foundation. So for me, I would say it's more of not necessarily the freshman year, but not necessarily waiting until your senior year. I would say somewhere in the middle grounds where you actually have that foundation and it's a payoff to where you're going to be more engaged in the the internship itself because you have that foundation. And then what you learn from that internship will turn right around and you'll be more engaged in the classroom when you come back because you'll have a better understanding of it when you get into those upper level accounting classes or classes in general. Good point, AJ. All right. Well, that was a good episode. Uh, internships. So I think we answered the question of, should you get an internship? You should. Uh, next episode, I'm actually looking forward to this one because it's dealing with traveling. Next episode, we're going to do chapter three of the advanced college series, and that's going to be studying abroad. Uh, I know, Jason, you've had experience studying abroad. I've had somewhat of experience, not the traditional studying abroad approach, but I have some experience in studying abroad. I love it. And so we're going to be talking through studying abroad, the opportunities and what you can get from that. So that is next week. Jason, you have anything to say before we leave? Just remind everybody, get those questions into us. Tell us about your successes. We want to celebrate them with you. You never know. We might even have you on the episode, right? If you have something, uh, something you can add to our listeners. But that being said, go to our website, reach out to us. We want to hear from you. Awesome. Well, until next time, we'll see y'all then. Goodbye. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Reschooled Podcast. Be sure to head over to reschooled.com for news and other information on things we're getting into.